Hi friends, welcome you all to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to present the topic Wills and Bondi model of curriculum development. John W. Wills and Joseph C. Bondi uh, are American educationists. Uh, they have contributed extensively to the field of curriculum about uh, they together written about nine books on curriculum they have over 30 years of experience in the field of teaching research training etc as a part of curriculum analysis and development. They analyzed education and curriculum in various nations and they proposed a plan rather than a model for curriculum change not merely termed as a curriculum development because in their view curriculum is not occurs all on a sudden. We have already a curriculum and we have to analyze it uh, and revise it. That's their uh, basic idea regarding curriculum. So the curriculum change actually they uh, propose and they developed a plan named as curriculum management plan so their plan is more on management side of curriculum how we are managing the curriculum in institutions and this uh, plan or this model also is an extension of Taylor and Taba model of curriculum so there are basic assumptions regarding curriculum and curriculum change, etc. are the following. Bring about a lasting change. That's the, one, uh, the first and prominent assumption regarding their uh, proposal or model or curriculum management plan it is essential to bring a long lasting change and in such a kind of change all the major stakeholders shall be involved in assessing the proposed change that's the first assumption so there, uh, there is a need for a change and that change shall be assessed by major stakeholders such as students, teachers, parents, administrators, etc. The second assumption, change, change must be from top-down manner. It should not be a spontaneous one. To all levels. So that's the second assumption. The change should be planned and implemented at the topmost level at first. A top to down plan is proposed. So at top level there should be a thorough internalization of the philosophy of change that's actually they mean that philosophy of change should be internalized from top to successive levels so that's the second assumption then the third assumptions decisions shall be based on hard data which will be open to all involved in planning so that's the third assumption Decisions regarding a change 
or the requirement of a change that should be based on proper data and that data should be open to all those who involved that is the major stakeholders we have already said the students teachers parents uh, administrators other experts etc so the data should be available to all these people then evaluation and accountability should drive the change so that's another uh, assumption and the change is based on evaluation as well as accountability of the existing uh, program then planning goes through the cycle uh, the uh, cycle followed for any standard curriculum they also uh, stress that cycle of activities for curriculum development such as analysis design implementation and evaluation so the planning should be planning for the change planning for curriculum change should follow the cyclic activities such as analysis design implementation and evaluation so these are their uh, basic assumptions regarding a new uh, curriculum or a curriculum revision that's their best uh, better uh, usage for their philosophy for a curriculum change existing curriculum should be uh, refined or revised so the uh, they propose for a long lasting change uh, directing from top to uh, successive uh, layers and any decisions on the uh, regarding change should be based on uh, sound uh, data which should be open and the uh, driving force of the change shall be evaluation and accountability and the process of that change shall follow the standard uh, format or standard procedure standard process including analysis design implementation and evaluation so uh, regarding their proposal curriculum management plan cmp so they proposed a curriculum management plan for curriculum change so cmp introduces regularly into the change process by super imposing a management schemata over curriculum development framework and forcing values clarification and commitment that's their statement about the function of cmp so there should be a plan and that a uh, plan the basic or uh, salient feature of the plan is it introduces regularity into the process of change that's according to wilson bondi curriculum change is not a spontaneous one it should be a regular process it should be part and parcel of regular activities in an institution over a curriculum development framework and forcing values clarification and commitment so what are the inherent values of the existing curriculum and regarding the level of commitment so establishing goals assessing needs and determining priorities are steps in this process of change assessing needs determining priorities are the uh, major steps data from school staff administrators parents uh, 
etc shall be collected we already told about hard data on the basis of which decision regarding change shall be made so data from the major stakeholders shall be collected and these data subject to evaluation and accountability by an efficient management team so there shall be a curriculum management team as per the curriculum management plan then follow the four cycle uh, process for curriculum change analysis design implementation and evaluation then they propose the following steps in their uh, model as taylor did wilson bondi also ask few questions to elaborate their uh, steps in curriculum uh, change model first uh, level or first step or first first activity is defining the target by administration or board that is the first activity so for which level of uh, programs we propose a change so that should be say for example if we are planning to um, revise change the secondary curriculum so the board of secondary education should define what actually they mean by secondary education so it somewhat an extension of taylor is first question what purposes for which the schools stands for the institution stands for so what purposes similarly the administration or the board should define what is secondary education or what is elementary education so what is early child education or what is higher education so the concerned authority concerned administration should properly define what actually this means what actually secondary education means so that definition according to them is highly essential because we could not assess a, a thing an activity or a program without defining it so defining what it is what we mean by this is very essential and then they suggest are asking the following questions once there is a definition then what teachers are doing in classrooms that's a prominent question so uh, the administration define what is a program and then what actually happening in the classroom what is the role of teachers what they are actually doing then another question where do we stand now on the basis of teachers activities in classrooms we can get a realization that where are we standing now what is our present position with respect to the definition so the administrators or the board uh, defined the program and then we assess what teachers are doing in classroom and then where do we stand so what is our position so that's actually there actually comes the need assessment that a change is required to what extent or what all components what are directions the change is required so that need assessment and its result will provide us what is our exact position and where we want to go that's another question so this 
ஆன்சர் டு திஸ் கொஸ்டின் வில் பி ரிஃப்ளெக்டட் இன் தி டெஃபினிஷன் ஸோ வி டிஃபைன் செகண்டரி எஜுகேஷன் ஆஸ் ஸோ அண்ட் ஸோ அண்ட் வேர் வி வாண்ட் டு கோ ஸோ தி ஆன்சர் டு திஸ் கொஸ்டின் இஸ் எக்ஸாக்ட் தி டெஃபினிஷன் ப்ரப்போஸ்ட் பை கன்சர்ன்ட் அதோரிட்டிஸ் ஸோ தி டிஃப்ரென்ஸ் பிட்வீன் வேர் வி ஆர் அண்ட் வேர் டு வி வாண்ட் டு கோ வில் பி தி எமர்ஜிங் கோல்ஸ் ஆஃப் எஜுகேஷன் so by analyzing the existing conditions teachers activities in classroom need analysis we got some result and that result reflect what is our present position and the definition gives us where actually we want to go so the difference between these two give certain goals and that should be the goals for the proposed change in curriculum or that shall be the priorities of the change so regarding development they use the term analysis design implementation and evaluation as steps in any standard curriculum uh development cycle we as we already uh, seen so let us see each one of these in detail so analysis the analysis stage scrutiny of plus and minus of the current program plan including determination of future needs and requirements so that's the first stage and this stage is common for most of the curriculum development plan scrutiny of uh, the strong sides or strong points as well as weak points of the existing program and that analysis gives us uh, a realization or, or a direction towards future needs and future goals of the program and what all requirements in terms of resources training etc or uh, content uh, addition etc shall be uh, made so that's the first step analysis and the second one is the design stage so in the design stage selection of preferred direction for the future and preferred methods and solutions so that's the second uh, step in the developmental process and in this step the direction of change so what direction uh, should be required for the change so uh, with its uh, details for the future and the suitable methods required for uh, change as well as uh, solutions for major problems identified as a result of analysis and in the third phase implementation phase in the implementation uh, stage or the third step development of action plans to facilitate initiation of the program plan so that's the third step the action plan should be formulated on the basis of design which is prepared by analysis and that action plan help to initiate preparation of program plan that is the implementation uh, activity a program plan shall be developed and evaluation is the fourth step or fourth stage in the cycle collection of data to allow determination of program effectiveness so once this program is actualized necessary data shall be collected to analyze or to assess 
the effectiveness of the program so these are the four major activities uh, for developing curriculum according to wilson boundy and in the as uh, some major features of the model and it's a prolonged activity according to wilson boundy it is not a spontaneous activity but it requires years of time years of time to complete the or to realize a, an effective curriculum change and there shall be acquisition of proper philosophy of change from the top level onwards so as it is a, a regular activity or a routine of an institution and they observe that they can minimize political involvement in the curriculum uh, revision process and this model enable allocation of necessary resources as it is a continuous activity concerned with evaluation and accountability of daily activities within the classrooms it will be helpful to identify resources as well as its nature and how these resources can be utilized properly so the proposed model help to enable allocation of uh, resources and they also observe uh, it as a major uh, feature as philosophy of education can grow and intersect the planning process so in many uh, curriculum we can say that the philosophy and uh, actual curriculum shall stood separately but in this model they advocate that philosophy of education can grow along uh, with the process of curriculum change because it's a prolonged activity not a one time activity it is a regular a routine process hence that philosophy of education can intersect the planning process for a curriculum and their statement they have a, a clear statement about this uh, curriculum management or curriculum revision refinement activity the entire effort can be conceptualized as a distance a rate time problem as a distance rate time problem for as soon as we know where we are going the resources needed for implementation determine the time required to reach the desired ends so we have a plan for a proposed end that we have defined and in the process of acquiring that desired end we have to identify and mobilize necessary resources for that so that's about uh, wilson boundy model of curriculum development their model also is based on the theory and models proposed by taylor and taba they are uh, further extending the model to uh, institutional level as well as uh, classroom level and what actually happening within the classroom on a daily basis were evaluated and on the basis of evaluation and accountability of activities they propose a curriculum management plan and such a plan they propose for a quality curriculum revision a quality curriculum change model so that's the end of this presentation thanks for watching